Hello and welcome to my Swift tutorial series for beginners. In this video, we're going to revisit initializer methods and I'm going to tell you about designated versus convenience initializers. So let's get started. So here I've got a person class and all it has is one property called name, which is initialized to the string none. Remember when we talked about classes and default initializers, all classes will have a default init initializer. So that's why I can create a new person object like this. It's actually calling the uh, default initializer. Now I told you that the purpose of the initializer method was to make sure that um, that object is set up and ready to go. Now, in addition to allocating memory and doing all of the other things that it needs to do to create that object and return it to us, another job of the initializer method is to make sure that all the properties of that object are initialized. And let me show you what that means right now. So for example, in this person class, I have a name property. Um, it's initialized with this piece of data, none. Now let's say I create an optional. Let's say not salary, let's say uh, net worth or something like that. Um, and let's make this an optional integer. And that is also already initialized to nil because remember I told you that by default, the value is nil for optionals. Now I can also say gender, uh, let's make this an optional string that is already unwrapped. Now this is also initialized to nil. So right now, by default, all of the properties of the person class are already initialized. So that's why I can create a person object like that without a problem. But let's say that one of the properties is not initialized. Now let me show you what that looks like. For example, for name, I can say that it's going to be a string type, but I can not assign it any value, right? Then it's going to start to complain and say that, hey, your person class needs to have an initializer explicitly where you initialize the name property. So in this case, what we do is we do init and then we assign a value to that property, right? Because this is not an optional, right? If it is an optional, then that's a different story. It, it is initialized to nil. But when you just say that it's a name property and it should contain a value, right? This is the string data type. It should contain a string value. And you're not assigning a value to it, then it falls on the initializer method to give it a value before that object gets passed back to you when you create a new person object. So uh, I can show you, let's say let a equals new person object, and then I can print a dot name. I can show you what that is, All right? It's none because when we create this new person object, it's calling this initializer and it's initializing this name property to none. I can also try to print uh, net worth for you. And you'll see that um, it's going to be nil. Now, these initializer methods, which ensure that all of the properties are initialized, you know, we're just calling them initializer methods, but the proper name is designated initializer. And these designated initializer methods can be guaranteed to return that object to you ready to use all of its properties initialized, so on and so forth. Now there's another type of initializer method called a convenience initializer. So these convenience initializer methods are for you to kind of preset some of the properties of that object based on what you need. And then that convenience initializer should call a designated initializer just to make sure that all of its properties are set. So let me give you an example of what that, what that looks like. So let's say that this is our designated initializer, right? Because, because it makes sure that all 
properties are initialized and it's ready to go. Now I can create a convenience initializer by using the convenience keyword like that. And let's say I want to create an initializer to create a rich female. So let's say that you need to pass in the gender and you need to pass in the net worth or it could be a, a rich person in general, right? Then I would, first of all, I would need to call the init, right? Call the designated initializer to ensure that the object is ready to go. Set any other properties or custom code to initialize for this scenario. So I can say, you know, self.gender is equal to whatever gender was passed in, and self.net worth is equal to, ah, I forgot to put a type here. So let's put, say that's int. All right, missing self. All right. All right, so this is creating a new person object, creating a new rich person object. Let B equals person, and I can use my uh, mail. Let's change that to mail. Like that, right? So this convenience initializer just gives me an easy way to create a specific type of person object initialized to some sort of whatever values that I need. But it calls the designated one because this is kind of like the steadfast anchor initializer that makes sure that all of its properties are initialized. So you can count on it as sort of like the go-to initializer. So just to recap, designated initializers are those that guarantee all of its properties are gonna be initialized and that that object is ready to go for you. Whereas convenience initializers are optional and they basically give you an opportunity to create an object but preset it to the values that you need, like what we did in this case. But convenience initializers must call a designated initializer as well, just to make sure that everything is set up and ready to go. So you can see that we did it here in line 16. So that's the difference between a designated versus a convenience initializer method. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already. All right, click on over there for the next video and I'll see you there.